many of us, journalist Bill Hall developed a deep appreciation for our team leader and CEO of the museum in Tacoma, David Madeira. Our team leader left us one night, David, um, from the CEO from America's Car Museum, went out one night and was left to the cruise to get back to the hotel. It was only about 20 minutes away. Well, as soon as we got on the freeway, you could tell there was miscommunication going on. People were splitting off on the first off-ramp, going three different directions. Uh, poor Ashley, she couldn't, uh, she didn't have any change for the toll booth. She had to pitch to the uh, the riding journalist to, to empty his wallet to get us through the toll booth. And then finally, we all converged back in the hotel, probably about an hour and a half later. And uh, the person who was last was actually there first. And we said, well, we don't want to go anymore without David. That's, uh, we learned that lesson. To wrangle the cats. when we went up Loveland Pass and we kept trying to call David on the radio and we couldn't get him so he called me on the cell phone and said Ashley I can't find the radio anywhere I was like okay well look when we get to the top so Val and I get out we go through his car we're digging through his backpack we're looking under the seats we can't find it anywhere so we get on the other radio and we're like test test you know we're saying all these silly things I'm like can you find the radio and we keep hearing it we're looking everywhere we keep looking and then finally Val goes and it was on the visor the whole time and we had forgotten it was there. So he was like, I could hear you talking, but we couldn't, he couldn't talk back and we thought he lost the walkie, but he didn't. So it's probably one of my favorite memories because he could hear us, we couldn't hear him. And then we found it in probably the most obvious place in the car. You didn't say anything bad or uh, inappropriate at all. At no, no, okay. we did learn that. Even if you don't hear someone talking back, they might still can hear you on the radio. So you want to, <laughs> you want to watch your P's and Q's. One of my favorite points of laughter was that first morning in Bend, Oregon, when the locks froze on the 57 Chevy Nomad. Well, this could be a problem. I feel like we don't even have the right key here. controlling that 66 Chrysler 300G. It had its moments. It just wallows all over the road. What they've done is intentionally adjusted the steering box so it's a little bit loose to prevent wear on this old old uh, steering box. So, so when you want to uh, 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 turn right or left, uh, you know, turn the steering wheel and wait a little while and then it, it comes around. Kind of like steering a big boat. This trip wouldn't have been much unless we had Derek, our photographer, along to document this fabulous, fabulous journey. 
But uh, Derek got attacked by his own drone. We had three drone crashes and a crushed GoPro. So I recall you showing us a uh, a a sleeve of your coat that had some <laughs> duct tape on it. It did. It did. Yeah, we had a one of our sponsors is Shell, and uh, we had a we had a GoPro go down in a Shell parking lot. And uh, it went upside down, and I went to grab it, and it was it was in full flight. It thought it was in full flight at the time. It turned out to be a bad GPS update. Uh, so I had to grab the go the uh, the drone yeah. and and hold it while I was operating the app to to try to shut off the the drone. And so while doing that, you know, instead of letting it go and take out a bunch of patrons at the shell. Um, I decided to hold it and I had just gotten this brand new really nice down jacket and uh, Yeah, decided to tear into the jacket and shoot feathers across the parking lot And we we're kind of freaking out at that point too because I'm trying to shut off the drone And then we see all these feathers flying and we, we didn't understand where that was coming from and It was actually from my jacket so. I understand you lost a, a GoPro uh, on the highway too yeah, we lost a GoPro on the highway. My philosophy with uh, with filmmaking is that you know you try to you always try to get the things that other folks aren't willing to get. You know, I mean, sometimes that's the most interesting looking footage. You know, the stuff that you're not used to seeing. And in that case, I just I was gonna put a GoPro in the highway, and I knew I told Ashley before I put it in there. She's she was a support vehicle driver. I told her that the GoPro probably wasn't gonna make it, so I stripped it down to basically just the GoPro and the SD card. And it did quite well. I mean, all our drivers went over it perfectly. Uh, we had three semis and a U-Haul truck perfectly go over it. And the very last vehicle that went over it, and I was signaling him this way, but he was white knuckled on his steering wheel, and he, decided to pull it off towards the middle of the, the highway and took out my GoPro. And we found him at a rest stop a couple miles down the road and I jokingly took the GoPro to him and told him he owed me 400 bucks. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't go for it. 